Hello, welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Eugene Edwards and we're here at Fender Hollywood and uh, we're going to talk about soloing, how to get started with soloing. We're going to be breaking down some fundamental guitar soloing concepts for you beginners out there. Even if you've never played one, this is the episode for you. Uh, and we're going to use some songs from our site to help you help you up and running. But we also have some stuff uh, for the more advanced level as well. Plus, we have our Fender Gear giveaway. So please stick around and see if you've won. And I want to say hello to everyone tuning in from, let's see, we got Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand. What time zone is that? The middle one. The middle one? Yep. Okay. It's the middle You're one. You're continuing Middle Earth. I know what you did there. Uh, Canada, uh, Amsterdam, hi, and also the US, obviously. So uh, thank you everybody for waiting over there in the comment section uh, calmly with your nice cups of tea and everything. Welcome. Uh, helping us through today's journey is a returning champion, Dr. Molly Miller. Look at you. Hi. hi. This is the second time I've ever actually seen you in person. This is so exciting. I know. At the Christmas party, and I actually walked over and like touched your shoulder. Just it's like you're really there. Uh, so welcome, welcome to stage D. We're gonna play together. Today. Oh my god! I know. I'm, I've been really excited about this all week. This is thrilling. This is thrilling. Yeah. And all, we all, as always, we have the the mad scientist, Dr. Dylan Calajuri, over here in the in the. Uh... Yeah. Hello, Hello world. <laughs> Hi. And, and we're happy to see Dylan. No holes in the knees of his pants, everybody. I bought new jeans. He bought new he jeans. He used it from the, the he, coffee kitty. He, he, thinks a lot, he thinks a lot about you folks. All right, uh, now uh, Molly is an LA native guitarist and educator over at USC. She's played with such artists as Jason Mraz and, and J-Mo of the Almond Brothers. Uh -huh. That is gonna be a little foretelling for this episode. And she's a recording artist in her own right under Molly Miller Trio. Molly, what are you playing today? And let's get a little sample of it. I am playing the American Pro 2. And this is the three-tone sunburst. I am a big fan of this instrument, so it's nice to play it today. With the matching top. Matching top. That's I, right. Yeah, just like happened naturally. That. It's meant to be. I'm taking it home. Can we hear just a, a touch of this guitar? <laughs> wow. She should have done the demo. Did you, wow. oh, maybe you did do the I video. Did do the, you did do the demo Midnight for this. blue, different color, though. Okay, you did the midnight blue. And what are you, what are you playing over here, Dylan? You have two things over here you've been playing I, today. You know what? Yeah, so today I'm going to get to play this Corey Wong. Oh, Former cool. guest Corey Wong, oh. yeah, right. The so you get to see some of that one, and then I have this uh, Ultra P bass. Let's see it. Little, little Tower of Power action there. See, oh, look, wow. Sorry, got away. Wow, from that was that's you the, got away the from me. bass version of a mic drop. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get to it. If you have any questions about soloing or how to get started. Drop them in the comments. We'll try to do our best to answer them. And all the solos or riffs that we're playing in today's episode, you can learn note for note on Fender Play. So make sure you look for the full song version or click the links in the description. So today, uh, we're gonna use four solos and riffs to act as springboards for your soloing. So Molly, before we get to our first solo though, what are some general tips you would give to students, you're an educator, on, on soloing or, or how, to, how to start thinking about it? Yeah, I feel like first of all, just changing your, your mind frame around it. A lot of times people think soloing and it's like scary. You think you have to like shred. Mm -hmm. But I think just starting slow and thinking of soloing as creating melodies. So you could even try like singing something and then playing it on your instrument. It doesn't even have to be those exact notes just to get inspired by maybe a rhythm or a phrasing of something. But kind of just doing small pieces and thinking of it not in this big scary thing, but mm -hmm. little small melodies. Right, okay, little morsels, if you will. Uh, so, so we're gonna start with a Nirvana solo. Uh, and we played this song, or, or bits of it, on the show before, I believe, but this one's pretty, pretty special in terms of how simple it is, and, and essentially you can play the melody of the song uh, as Kurt does on this. So are you, are you, do you have your drummer ready? Can you wake him up? Ready to go, guys, put right, it out, do, put that down. Here's okay. Come As You Are. He's ready. And, uh, and Molly's gonna take the lead here, and Dylan and I are gonna just kind of support. Mm, mm. I turn my back on you and you're doing crazy stuff. Okay, 
<laughs> uh, thank you very much, Peanut Gallery. I appreciate that. Okay, that's that's uh, Come As You Are, the solo, uh, as, as we hear it on the Nevermind album. So what is it about this solo that can be, if, if people learned it, has, why is this a good reason to get started with soloing? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a couple elements. There's only four notes, which is, I feel like, less intimidating. You don't have to worry about a whole scale or playing a, a bunch of tones, which is four notes, and it's all on one string. So you don't even have to worry about switching strings and things like that, but just four notes, one string. And it's very melodic, right? It's like simple, you can sing along to it. So it's, yeah, I feel like it's a nice, a nice place to start. Cool, and then Dylan, uh, when we're playing on like one string, we're just kind of following the melody around, um, how can we use tone as a way, because yeah, it, it is, it's just a few notes, but it's very effective as it sits in the, on the record, obviously. Yeah. And uh, what can we do in terms of tone to get our, our beginning soloists inspired? Yeah, so when you're starting a solo, I think what you notice, you start listening to solos more, you notice that they're usually a little louder than the regular guitar part, and maybe there's something about them that's undulating. Oh, or yeah, <laughs> just, wobbling. Yeah, wobbling, okay, perhaps, yes. yes. Uh, and so, so I'm not so sure we're approved to use the word undulate. Undulate, well, so we'll work on that. We'll work on the licensing. But basically, we had, so we had, I think on the original recording, Kurt was using like a chorus or maybe an ebb and tide harmonizer. Mm -hmm. But what we used for Molly today was called a vibe unit on the GTX. A vibe right? unit. And uh, I'll, I've, I've got it pulled up. You guys can probably see this right now. Can we see this? Uh, I, they're probably seeing it. Uh, uh, NASA's involved. But so basically, <laughs> I'm going to speed up the vibe yeah. unit so you can really hear how intense it gets. So Molly, play, play just a little pin to that. <laughs> That's a reasonable amount of vibe. That's the type of vibe you could take home to your grandparents and they'd be okay with right, it. Right, not gonna scare them. Now, hold on. So let's go, let's do something. Here we go, go ahead, Molly. No, 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 no. See, that's the no, toilet start flushing no. backwards yeah. again. And yeah. I like it too. I like it. <laughs> but it stands out, right? All of a sudden you notice, hey, this is something to look at and listen to. Mm -hmm. That's a tool in soloing. Gotcha. You never get away from that, no matter how you know advanced you get on guitar. Right. So even if it's a, a solo with just a couple of notes on one string, you can add some effects there and and, uh, and get inspired. And and again, don't you don't have to ex exactly copy what what uh, Kurt did. Like you no. said, just get extreme with it, and uh, you could just get by on vibe alone. I love the fact that it's rock and roll, and there are no rules, except be cool. That's the, <laughs> that's really the only rule. <laughs> That's a tricky one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we got a question uh, in the, from the Fender Play community. This is Jonathan Lingo. Question for Dr. Molly. That's you. Is there any technique to help a person memorize a solo? Just, just chunk it up in repetition or what works for you? So, yeah. Like, like say the, the Come As You Are solo, for example. Like, yeah. Be a memorization technique. I feel like a couple things. S having it in your head, being able to sing it is a huge part. Hmm. And um, I feel like a lot of learning sometimes, like we just want to get right to it and play the thing and play the thing fast. But actually breaking it down helps you learn it in a lot more thorough way. So singing it and making sure you have it in your head. And like you said, breaking it into small pieces. So instead of right away being like, just get two notes down. And then do three notes. And so forth. So that kind of thing, I think, is a good a good place to start. And actually, always, even for me, like when I'm learning, when I'm learning things, I, I still always go in really small chunks. Yeah. Uh, now we have a question from YouTube, Scott Fulgeman. Ah, a, a returning guest. Uh, hey, Scott. Uh, viewer. Yeah. Hey, is it, which keys are easiest to get started in soloing? Well, it's uh, a good question. I Okay, no, go ahead, take it, go ahead. No, I mean, I feel like the guitar, we kind of can cheat because it's a guitar, it's an instrument where like, once you learn a shape, you can move it around. But um, I, I played E and like, cause I think it's a kind of a, it's- I was tempted to say E as well. It's a getter key. It's, it's a, a get. guitar key. They love it. <laughs> Horns players hate us, but we love it. Mm -hmm. E and A, I would say. A because of the A minor pentatonic scale and E because of the E minor pentatonic scale. There, you Open know strings. Yeah. yeah, Scott, you know, if, you may want to take a look on the site for the, like the E minor pentatonic scale or the G pentatonic open in first yeah. position. If you get those down, uh, you know, playing those individual notes, it's a combination of open strings and maybe a little second fret sort of stuff. But honestly, you can really Really, you can create a solo on that. Uh, let's see, there you could do. Uh... There's a mix of chords and open stuff on Wish You Were Here, which yeah. we teach on the site. So that's a, that's a you know, you're kind of yeah. there. And, and, uh, and, and uh, we had a question from my, uh, someone asking, any tips for soloing on an acoustic? Well, frankly, um, all the techniques we're talking about today 
they apply to acoustic guitar. That's why I'm using the, oh, I didn't announce what I was playing. Obviously, I have the Acoustasonic Jazzmaster in Olympic white. Um, and it, this plays like an acoustic. And I'll, you know, I could have, uh, I don't know, I can do. Uh, you can play lead lines on acoustic just fine. Even if it's a single note thing with just vibrato. That exists on an acoustic guitar, so you know we're gonna we're, we're, we've got something for uh, acoustic and electric players here. Uh, this next one here is a ZZ Top tune, a classic from the '80s. Uh, we're gonna play "Sharp Dressed Man," the lick, and then we're gonna talk about how if you learn this lick, how you can kind of extrapolate this into soloing. Extrapolate. I used one of your words. <laughs> Extrapolation. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're in the key of C. Is your drummer ready, Dylan? Take it away, boys. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Man. Well done, Molly. We did it. We did it. Uh, uh, so this riff, how can, how can this be instructional in, our, in, in starting how to solo? Ooh, I think a lot of times taking parts, and this is like so many things from this lick you can use, uh -huh. but taking parts from a song, whether that be the melody or a riff or parts of a chord, you can use that in your solo. So that's like one thing that comes to mind, but also the notes are from a C minor pentatonic scale. So being able to use the notes from the riff, which are a minor pentatonic scale. So you can use those. Yeah, I, I love it. You know, there's we were in Europe one time and we pulled over to get gas and we were listening to ACDC and I was arguing we with the drummer about how the solo is super endemic, right? Not the right Why word. are you? Anyways, but I told him, what? basically, we got out and the guy pumped the gas and he finished singing the solo when we turned ah, the car. It shows it's you so that casual. a good solo, mm -hmm. mm. anybody could sing it. Okay. Your babysitter, anybody, right. doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> well, this is, it's funny because uh, uh, someone's asking the question, Eric Lindsay, who's in the community, says, how many notes are enough in a solo? How many are too many? This is kind of an existential soloing question, oh. isn't it? It is. Because there's some solo, I mean, there's some solos that are quite minimal. Oh. Yeah. And they're just right. Yes. I would yeah. say too many notes are when you're starting to play when the singer comes back in. That's ah. when you know it's too many, in my experience. Get out. Get out when the singer comes in. Otherwise, there's going to be a fight in the dressing room. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, and, the, and the, there's double. I, I, there's, there's double, double stop. Stops totally. There. Those count for two. So that's two mm. each one of those. That's you're already exactly. counting up. But, but you know, take, take that lick, and then if you don't mind, Molly, just kind of like go create an, an, another solo or another passage that isn't in the song using those double stops, if you could. There you go. So it's the same gathering of notes you were playing before. You just change the order of them, yeah. and you have a new solo. Yeah. Pretty hip. Yeah, there's like guitaristic rhythms and things. That Rhythm! You're, yeah, you're quoting different. Well, it's funny you mention that because Victoria, who's watching on YouTube, asks, how should I use rhythm in a solo? Victoria, we're you simpatico. You know what is a yeah, cool tip? Yeah, locked in. Uh, sorry. It's no, just, good. This made me think of a cool tip that I, I learned from a friend where um, if you're struggling with, like, to get inspiration from rhythm, you could even sing the melody of a different song to get inspired yes. oh, by wow. rhythm. Like, you'd wow. be like, you are my sunshine, or whatever. And okay. then I'd be like. <laughs> That's Wait, this is fun. Do that. OK, pick, an pick another thing. I like this. I, I have to think about what I'm sailing away. No, uh, let's What am I allowed to bad, say? Yankee Doodle Happy Landing. birthday. Oh, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. So I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right.
right. I'll, I'm gonna. I never thought of that. Yeah. That's really, really smart. Okay, cool. Well, I like it. That's, Absolutely. That's a really, really good. Love that's it. a that's a great secret. Isn't that a great secret? All right. We're, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I think we could argue that if aliens landed on our planet and we had to explain rock and roll to them, mm. this next solo, the intro to Johnny Be Good, might be the right thing. Mm. So, and this is a, essentially a 12-bar blues, really. Um, but Chuck kind of like really sets the template for rock soloing with this one. And he's basically working out of the E shape. Uh, we're gonna do this in key of A, because that's the key in which we teach it on the, on the, the that's site. Correct. Um, and your drummer fell asleep again. Okay, come on guys, seriously? It's a union job. <laughs> it, it, <it's, laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, oh. Mm. Mm. Two. Oh, here we go. Uh, mm. So you're thinking, okay, Molly just ripped through the intro to uh, Johnny Be Good. But let's, let's, if you don't mind just breaking this down a little bit and showing us a couple of other things that we can grab yeah. from the solo to create our own. Even like taking pieces. Mm -hmm. so, so let's say like the first line. That three notes from that E shape mm -hmm. pentatonic. Mm -hmm. What if you change the order? Or what if you just use those three notes to make a solo? There you go, you created a whole new phrase just by borrowing those three notes and just changing them around a little bit. Yeah. Don't forget to use the happy birthday lick. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the, the rhythm from that, that's great. Let's look at some questions. <laughs> Rob Rippey's asking on YouTube, are making the great bases necessary when playing a solo? Yeah. Do you see this? <laughs> That's where you know how hard the, I work? <laughs> all the work goes into that, really, to be honest. <laughs> and Big Lou on YouTube is asking, any tips for finger transitioning? I just started playing, and I'm sure it's just a matter of practice. But maybe there's a tip here with finger transitioning. Anybody? Go super, super slow and make sure everything is close to the, to the neck. Like, I think with left and right hands, keeping everything as small as possible. Like, I think you want to be like... <laughs> And like your fingers start getting thrown all over the place. If you get close up on my hand, you could see like you don't want this. You want so tight, tight and light. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. That does kind of look. It looks like a. Yeah, it kind of. It kind of looks a little bit. So kind of just slow it down, get it smooth. Not a lot of. Don't make it look like you're trying to land an airplane over there. You're just <laughs> gonna keep it, keep it calm. <laughs> Emmanuel Hake, I hopefully I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, has says any tips to avoid hitting other strings when doing mm. a solo? Wow, that's tough. This is kind of. Uh, yeah. Is this a, a string muting uh, situation? It's, it's, I mean, it's or, individual to the solo, of course, but uh, it, the goal here is to make this like reflexive, right? Like you can tie your shoes without ever thinking about it, pretty much. Oh. So whatever you're doing, I mean, you just want to get enough repetition in there. And using what Molly just talked about, I mean, so the smallest amount of force possible mm -hmm. uh, with the least amount of distance possible is going to give you the best shot at not hitting things around you. Is this something SAT? This will be at, there will be a test at the end. It's in metric system. Ugh. But it, it, it'll give you a shot at, um, at really being able to develop a, a large amount of skill in that. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, any, anybody out there in the, in the, that's watching, hit us in the, in the question or the comment section rather, and tell us if there's a solo that you're just trying to learn right now, especially if you're beginners. Tell us what you're trying to learn right now and see if, 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 you know, if we know it, we'll kind of give you a little yeah, bit of a tip here. Check out the warm-ups on play. I think that's a great place mm. to give it a shot. There are plenty of warm-ups on play. That's a, that's a great tip. Yeah, yeah. It, help, it helps with that dexterity, helps with the rhythm that we're talking about here. Now, Molly, uh, some time ago, you were a guest on, on the show and you went through the cage system with us. And I know that for me, when, when I, if I have to learn a solo uh, to this day, I tend to think of the cage system a lot, like going from this shape to that shape. Yeah. Or even following the changes, I, even if I'm just playing a single note thing, um, I'm seeing the chord shape that I'm outlining the whole time. Mm. So uh, totally. we thought maybe we'd take this riff, and you just played with J-Mo, who was one of the drummers from the Almond Brothers. And so we're gonna do a little bit of Jessica, cool. which is in A, and we'll show you the two shapes that you can use over, the, over this, this one chord in order to play Jessica, which I think is a, a beautiful uh, little solo. And I hope I get the harmony right. <clears throat> okay. Both All right. of us hope we get the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guitar we'll minis. Here. Let's do it, boys, here we go. 
I'm sorry. Can you say it again? I screwed it up already. Hey, come on now. I screwed it up already. I'm so sorry. I let you down. No, wait, wait. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> very so, nice. So sorry. Yeah, very. You were slick. You, and you were even. You were good. I don't know what happened. We were, it's all a blur. It was a blur. Okay. So let's talk about these these two shapes in this riff, if they've learned it on the site, and how that can help them in soloing. Yeah. So the the first shape I'm working out of is is, is the D shape. Mm -hmm. You can see it right mm -hmm. here. Like literally, this is a D a D chord moved up. Now so we're in the key of A, and the first three notes are. So just you just right spell out, out the, the three notes of that chord. Yeah. Right. And then so, and then you play like a little a little thing. And then I go down to the A shape. I mean the E shape, sorry. E shape. We're in the key of A, the E shape, like right here. And I go. And it's so we're going between like kind of that D shape and then to the E shape. Very, very, very yeah. good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you're already playing and you know, and you know E, and you know D. It's like you can already kind of get some traction here, right? Because you could take that yeah. D shape. One cool thing might be you just try moving it up the neck in a couple spots. And then develop from there. You could even try sliding into each note. I don't know. That could, that could that's pretty good. The, the cat might run around in the room. Um, <laughs> that, but that's pretty good. That's planing, right? So there's like, I think what, what gets uh, demystified as you spend more time learning how to solo is that you're already doing a lot of the things that you need to do to be able to solo. You're yeah. just sort of developing them in a voice. Gotcha. That kid on YouTube is asking, does how you hold your pick change the tone of a solo? I, I know, pick attack, I guess, is what we're talking about. Yeah. Right? Um, do you hold yours? I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a nor I just, I'm a normie. I just kind of hold it like this. I'm not a normie. Oh, okay, no. what do you I'm do? I'm a sideways. Yeah. So, so a lot of people, most people use their pick and you'll be taught to play like this. So like you're holding on to that fat part. Right. Also, I love these fender picks, these confetti picks. <laughs> Anyways, I use the side and I find that it's warmer because I'm always going, I, I want a, a warm round tone and then I can adjust how I'm hitting and attacking, but I am going from the side and getting the fat tip. Are you a, a fat tip guy too? I think I'm a, I'm actually a pointy tip guy, but I, I'm definitely like a fingers guy. Oh. Nice. Because it's, it's I think it's a great way to get a lot of articulation. Her her trick with the pick is a lot of people get killer tone yeah. playing with the fat side of the pick. So switching even just between those two sides. Or uh, you start to get a completely different attack on it. It changes the way you play too. Totally. Interesting, you know, I think the edge use, uses the fat end. Yes, oh. he does. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so you're not alone. I mean, you guys, it's, it's a, so yeah. try turning the pick around. Why not? Anything that may inspire. Uh, solos that, that some of our, uh, our, our, our uh, subscribers are working on or our viewers are working on. Black Dog. Uh. Uh, now this is interesting. Now that solo at the end of Black Dog uh, is a great example of, of going from one shape to the next. Um, and I always kind of play it kind of as a country lick, frankly. Uh, but it starts in this kind of G shape, A. And then he ends up here, the E shape, A. Yeah. So he starts here with this shape of A, but he wraps up the lick here. So it all stays on the same chord. We're not changing chords, we're just changing shape over the same chord. So that's a great one to learn. Also, so, someone's learning Sweet Child of Mine. You really is, can't, it's compulsory. Uh, it's not on play, but can you give them a tip? That one's harder, by the way, I, I never even learned that one, and then I was doing a gig and someone called it out. I said, sure, and as soon as I started it, oh I, I, I don't know how to drive out of this. I, I would say assign, so it starts at 12, right? Assign your first finger, yeah. anything that's a 12. Anything that's a 13, use your second finger. Anything that's a 14. Oh, oh, okay. So they're always assigned, which means you get the finger memorization part of it out of it. Now you're just worrying about frets. So and each finger is assigned to a fret, yep. no matter the string. It's positional. There's your tip. Uh, and also, someone's learning the intro to 
Under the Bridge, which is on play I mean, and it's part say. of a new collection, but, we'll, but we're going to get to that. Uh, Dylan, do you mind assigning some homework here? Hopefully we, we got you guys inspired on the solo stuff. Just a few little handy tips. I'd love to. All right, go ahead, take it away. So uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this is the call to the adventure, right? We're taking on the soloing. You're, you're about to embark upon the monomyth and you need friends, you need helpers. If you're a beginner, you're just leaving the home. Right, so you're going to select <laughs> Kicking three notes birds from the nest. Uh, nobody knows what I'm saying. You're going to select <laughs> oh three God. notes from any it's of the souls exciting. that we did today. So, for example, let's say we take the first three notes of Jessica. Molly, please help me. We're going to. There they are. We're going to stylize them. So hmm. you're going. That's already enough, right there. All right. So let's say you're having a bad day. Play the day you're having, Molly. Wow. <laughs> that was that was cathartic. Yeah, that's okay. a bad day. Let's say you're filling up. Right. You had a lot of coffee. Let's do it. <laughs> wow. well, let's say, let's, uh, so basically, you can start to really learn how to voice this. You don't need to know every terminology to be able to do this. You just start by, with the human terminologies. So uh, if you're intermediate, learn sharp dressed man. It's actually harder than you might think. And if you're advanced, all right. He's never impressed with you, advanced player. No, 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 it's fine. We're good it's enough fine. for this guy. If that's what we're going to do. The great Santini over here. If you're advanced, Johnny, be good. So learn the solo to Johnny, be good. Learn the beginning. As taught on the site. As taught on the site. You get those 12 bars down. You're into rock and roll. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so now let's uh, let's let's talk about the site uh, and what we have up on the site now. We're giving things away. We're always giving things. I'm away. giving something away right now. Give it away now. So uh, every week we give away something, and all you have to do is Thank be you. a member of Fender Play. You simply have to use it for a minimum of 21 minutes in seven-minute segments called streaks. <laughs> Get your streaks on. <laughs> so uh, and you're automatically entered to win, right? So that means ah. you can pick from guitars, amps, basses, and I might just say your name at the end of the show. Do you guys want to know who won this week? Yeah. Hey, yeah, give me a beginning solo warm up to this. Here we go. In what key? I have no idea what I'm doing. It's going to be a D. First time solo, and it's Richard H. <laughs> Richard H. Congratulations, Richard H. You won. See, because your name's on the screen, and it That's never you lies. Know. All right, congratulations, Richard H. You uh, enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. Make sure you get a confirmation email from us, and then you'll take it from there. Uh, Dylan, what is new on the site? This is big. Yeah? This is, I don't want to overstate this. You're going to take, take your time. I'm going to take my time. So this is a really big deal. Uh, there's, I don't know if you guys have noticed, if you've been paying attention, there's tons of Red Hot Chili Peppers on the site right now. Hmm. They are infecting the site. Oh, dear. <laughs> There you go. The peppers are in. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so uh, you may recognize this little ditty. Anyways, it's under the bridge, in case really? you were under a bridge for the entire 1990s. <laughs> the past okay, 30 years. so, and then another big one, and this is actually one of my, I think, my favorite peppers. Song? Can you say it like that? Uh, yeah. Sure, yeah, you let's, can be a pepper too. Let's go with that. So. Go ahead. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because it's going to it's going to tear up. Oh, oh dear. Breaking the girl. I, like uh, these were. This was a big part of the '90s and 2000s. I sure. Mean, get there. Learn. Get these there. Things. You can learn this stuff on the site. And by the way, uh, I, uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention that next week's episode is going to be focused on the Red Hot Chili Pepper collection. Oh, uh, yeah. Dan Ellis, one of our-, our I told uh, you it was a big deal. Law, yeah. First of all, instructors is gonna be here and walk us through a lot of the Chili Pepper stuff. We'll have tone tips, all sorts of stuff like that. So make sure you're here next, uh, next week. Now, if you have more questions about soloing and more advanced stuff, like playing in a key and across the fretboard, don't forget you can fire questions at instructors in the Facebook community. Oh, yeah. So a lot of the community members are, are already onto that, but they're there for you. Uh, meanwhile, can I, can we get a big thank you from Dr. Molly Miller. Just to see her in person is such a delight. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's so nice to be here, really. It's been a thrill. Uh, it's been so great to hang with you this afternoon. And, and tell us what you have coming up. I got some shows with my trio and my brother's group, actually. That's kind of what's coming up. So all around the, the country, I'll be in New York, I'll be in Iowa, I'll be in San Francisco playing Monterey Jazz Festival. So oh, wow. There too. So yeah, but if you go to my website, mollymillermusic.com, or follow me on Instagram, I'm pretty, I. I feel like I'm most consistent there. My my, I'm at Moody Mill, M O O D Y M I L L. So you can learn too much about me there. Okay. <laughs> All right. She'll be oversharing at a at a big coffee. Try not to. Big coffee. I'm not coffee shop. Exactly. Okay. Good. Uh, now until then, uh, keep safe, keep practicing. We'll see you next week at the same time, same bat channel. 
Everybody, let's go out on a G chord and feel free to solo over this. Everybody, type a capital G in the comments section. And on the count of four, we are out on one, two, three, four. <laughs>